This video is brought to you by CyberPower PC. Check the link below for more details. Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and today I'll be covering this Rosewell RGB80 backlit 10 keyless, I know some of you prefer that form factor, mechanical gaming keyboard featuring the kale blue switches, but it's also available in the brown switch variant. Here's everything you get in the box, the keyboard itself I'll go over in more detail in just a bit, but first let's take a look at what else comes with the purchase. So you get this hard braided cable and it's mini USB to USB. You get 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet of this cable and as you can tell the connectors are gold plated, very nice. Now moving right along. This is, I believe, your software CD, but you can go ahead and download everything online and be sure to keep your drivers updated. And this is uh, a quick user guide, but I'll tell you everything that you'll need to know about this keyboard. And in this baggie here, let's go ahead and remove its contents. It's very nice of them to have included a keycap puller for you, this standard plastic one. However, I've heard that this may or may not damage your switch or keycap, so it's best if you use this wire puller. Yes, you can get this on Amazon, it's very cheap, um, but this is not included, of course. You also get these extra keycaps to go with the keyboard, which is a plus, but what's even cooler is that these keycaps are clear all the way through, so you know the light is going to blind you. No, I'm just kidding, it's just gonna look really bright. And not only did they include the standard WASD as well as the arrow keys, which I have seen some keyboard companies do, I mean their products, um, but they also give you Q and E, which is just a little bonus for you because they love you. Here's a look at the bottom of the keyboard first, and of course you get some rubber feet to keep this unit in place when it's on a smooth surface. And it also comes with angled feet with rubber ends, so it grips and gives you a different height depending on what you prefer in terms of comfort. And then what's really cool about this is that you get cable channels. More of these keyboards should incorporate this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this mini USB cable into the mini USB port right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then I could tuck the cables in here like so, so that you can have an idea of how to do it and also how much cleaner you can have the cable, depending on if you have the case on this side, I mean your system or the system on that side. It's just all around good stuff. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you what this keyboard looks like with the angled feet. So this is height with the feet up. And then let's go ahead and put the feet down for the normal height. Here's a look at the dimensions of the board. So it measures 370 millimeters or 14.6 inches by 134 millimeters or 5.3 inches by 27 millimeters or 1.1 inches. And it weighs in at 0.99 kilogram or 2.2 pounds, which is about pretty standard for a 10 keyless keyboard, maybe a little heavier. And as for the material, it's got this smooth rubberized finish all along the front and the top and the edges of the keyboard. I love that. And the smooth touch finish is just fancy. Let's take a look at the function key as well as the alternate commands that you can access with it. So function plus F1 to F6, these are your multimedia controls for volume as well as play pause and the like. And then function F8 to F12, these are your profile keys. You get five of them for this keyboard and you can program it using the software that you can download. And I will give you a tutorial on that as well. Now moving right along, this is the pause break, but with function, it's the game mode button. This will kick you into Windows lock for those of you who game frequently. And then insert and delete, this will kick you into 6KRO and NKRO mode on this keyboard. And beneath that are the LED indicators, the game mode caps lock, as well as scroll lock. And what I like about it is it kind of looks like the monster claw symbol, but less clawy. <laughs> Alrighty, and last but not least, uh, you get the LED type and lighting adjust buttons on the arrow keys. Here's a closer look at the switch. These are kale blues. So they have a bump feel, but also a very satisfying click sound. And I gotta say, I've tried other 
kale blues before, but this it just feels good on this board. I feel like this board just is really good quality. Um, and the LEDs, as you can tell, sit on top of the housing, so it helps with brightening up your board once the keycap is on it. Now for a sound test, single key, and then a sentence. Alrighty, it's time for the LED demo. So right now, of course, it's on off, but let's go ahead and turn on the game mode as well as caps lock so you know what those LEDs look like. And what I really love about this board is everything is so bright. Alrighty, now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, increase the LED level. This is level one, level two, which is a bit brighter, and level three, this is gonna toggle the breathing, but it's, very slow, so wait for it. Okay, there it is, and then let's go up once more, just the WASD and the profile keys, and one more for the number keys, as well as the tab, uh, caps, shift, and whatnot. Kind of wish I could assign per key illumination, but anyway, this is still pretty cool. And then if you do function up again, you can only do function up or down on the arrow keys to change the lighting. Now then, let's go ahead and go to profile two, because I got a bunch of colors for you. And let's go up a level in lighting. You can tell, see, level one, level two. And then let's go to profile three. Okay, level one, level two, brightness. Profile four, ooh, this one is awesome. Nuclear spill, anybody? Anyway, there we go. And then profile five, which is JTL colors. I always have to make one JTL colors. I know, I'm vain. And here's how the LEDs look beneath the clear keycaps. I made sure to put all of them on there for you so you have an idea. Now then, I'm gonna go through the different colors, different profiles, so you can see how they look. Yeah, there we go. That looks nice. Oh, the green, feels like Halloween. And then purple. Here's a look at the Rosewall RGB80 keyboard software. Right now we are in PC mode. Not sure what this is all about, but maybe it's for a future expansion because if I click a key, nothing happens down here. You can sync a program. However, there's no point if you cannot keybind. Let's go to profile one. So in here, let's say you wanted to assign a function to Q. So you click it and then you click macro setting and then let's do M1. And you could set a delay time or repeat rate, but we are just going to record. And then I'm going to stop record and then hit OK. And as you can see, it is in yellow so that it will tell you that you have assigned a function to this key. Now let's go to W and assign a secondary macro, shall we? So M2. And let's start the recording. Just the standard recording. And then we hit stop record and click OK. There is one thing I'd like to bring up is that, oh my gosh, these letters are so tiny. Me granny eyes. Oh, hard to see. <laughs> um, especially when I'm tired. And uh, would have liked to see a drop down menu perhaps for all the macros that I have currently created. I never saw that, so maybe I'm missing something, but would have been nice if they kept the macros that I've made. Click OK. And let's say you want to do a key assignment and you just type on the keyboard, for example, one, click OK. And if you notice this bar down here, that is how much of the keyboard memory that you have used up. Right now, 2% out of the 512 kilobytes of provided memory. I love being able to save profiles and actions to the keyboard itself so that I don't have to open up a cloud and have internet in order to access it. So this is definitely a plus. And in addition to macro setting and key assignment, you know, I also wish that maybe I could assign a mute button. I'm pressing a mute button on my other keyboard and nothing is happening. <laughs> so would have liked to see different uh, multimedia functions and the like for this. But honestly, for most, I think just having the macro and key assignment options are awesome. And of course, you can go ahead and sync a program or Cancel, hold on, launch a program with the key and you could disable it or set it to default depending on what type of profile you're on. For example, if you set two to a specifically gaming profile, you want to disable keys so you don't accidentally press them. But back to profile one, it takes a while to apply these settings, but you have to hit apply otherwise they won't save the settings to the keys. 
and apply takes a while, so I would recommend that you go ahead and program the keyboard, all the keys that you want before hitting it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit apply. One hour later. Just kidding, it didn't take that long. <laughs> now let's go ahead and open up Notepad and see what Q, W. Oh my gosh, I spelled Cordy wrong. <sighs> okay, and E, give us. And that shows you that it is working properly. Now then, I'm sure you are curious as to how the lighting works. How do you set RGB colors to this keyboard? Well, click on the LED setting tab here and you'll notice these five profiles uh, kind of looking bullet shaped or pill shaped. If you click on the color next to it, you will get this bar of the range of colors that you can select. Just simply click it and click OK. And then that's the color that has been set to this profile. But let's go into this setting again. Now you could choose no lighting, single color lighting, single dimming, which is like breathing and color loop. So I have sat around for a bit and tested out this color loop and it does not go through all of these colors. Unfortunately, it instead cycles through these five profile colors. So pick them well. And let's say I click color loop. And if I go to profile two and then I click single color and then go back to Profile one, and oh my goodness, it is applied to all of them. <laughs> so I would have liked the option to apply one color type lighting to one profile. So that is something that I would love to see in a future update. I would also like to see perky illumination one day. I think that would look great. And other than that, I think it's uh, pretty decent for what it is, but would like to see future updates on more functionality. You can also reset the entire profile or import or export one, but that covers it for this look at the Rosewell RGB keyboard software. Here's a look at the pros and cons of the keyboard. So what I like about it, of course, the RGB LEDs, love being able to program colors to the keyboard. Now then, I also like that it's a compact keyboard, so that means it's a lot more portable, especially with the detachable cord, and the soft touch finish gives it a more premium look and feel. The cable channels on the bottom are always welcome. More keyboards need this, you listening? And then I also like the transparent extra set of keycaps provided. I don't usually see that, and clear really makes the colors pop. And in addition to the extra WASD keys, they've also included Q and E, which are very useful gaming keys. And what gaming keyboard would be complete without programmability functions? And I'm talking about macros, so thank you very much, Rosewell. And now for the cons. Since Rosewell was generous enough to include the extra keycaps, I would have liked to see R for reloading, F, C, and V, you know, I'm just greedy. All right, and I would have liked the keycap puller to be wired type. It's safer for both the switch and the keycap. And I wish there was a dimmer setting for the LEDs as they are very bright. And I know, I'm just complaining, but it would have been nice to have just one more level so if I don't wish to be bombarded with the lights. And again, with the PC mode and the software, not sure what its purpose is since nothing can be changed on that setting, as well as the uh, software itself reminds me of the Tessera Lobera actually. It's got some slow load times for applying settings and it needs larger font in some areas. And the lighting and color type could also be a bit more complex, for example, like perky illumination or being able to set different lighting effects to different zones of the keyboard. Well, that wraps up the video on the Rosewell RGB80 gaming keyboard featuring the kale blue switches. If you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media, Joanne Tech Lover Facebook fan page, Joanne Tech Lover again on Twitter, and Joanne Tech Lover once more on Instagram. Also, please don't forget to hit the donate button so you can help expand this channel and feed this techie. Also, I have a new channel up called JTL Lifestyle where I talk about everyday random gadgets for you, for me, for everyone. <laughs> And also one last thing is storyenvy.com where you can go ahead and check out my eight and a half by 11 inch autograph prints that you can buy. I guess all that's left to say is, Mwah! see you next time.